This is a familiar scene across our great nation. School is out. Even the playground is quiet. Think, the destiny of our country is determined in buildings like these. Here, the untrained skill of our youth will be developed. In schools like this one, is struck the first spark which, with proper care, will grow into the desire of accomplishment that guarantees a strong and free nation. But in this school, as in many others, the door of opportunity to learn doesn't always swing open for every student. A problem exists, a problem vital to the welfare of every person in this country. Stated simply, not all first grade students speak English. Yes, in our country, the United States. Ten years ago, in this little Texas town of Ganado, Isabel Verver started the school. She could not speak enough English to ask for a drink of water. Can you imagine yourself as a six-year-old in school, unable to speak or understand those around you? Today, Isabel remembers those frightening months in the first grade in school. Although she has not yet finished high school, she is trying to prevent other youngsters from experiencing the uncertainties she knew. She is teaching preschool children to speak English. Each morning, Isabel collects her class from homes like these. The children have eagerly taken to their new language. Isabel remarked once that organizing these classes and convincing the adults of the need was more difficult than instructing the children. The idea of organizing the classes came to Isabel one day while she was reading a teacher's magazine. From her personal experience and her work with the League of United Latin American Citizens, she was doubly aware of the predicament of her fellow Latin Americans. Without advice or encouragement, Isabel presented her English teaching plan to the school principal. It was well received. The parents of the children, however, were skeptical. At the beginning, her classes had four pupils. It has now grown to 47 children. She also has a class of 35 students in the neighboring town of Edna. Obviously, the parents are now in accord with Isabel's classes. Isabel still conducts the classes each day without pay. Only incentive is the personal satisfaction of working successfully for a good cause. To Isabel, the problem is a simple one. The Latin American is not adequately educated. He is not educated because he has not learned to speak English before he enrolled in school. Her solution is the only solution. Teach the children to speak English. Isabel, however, is only one person. Many more teachers are needed to teach preschool children English. The lack of the ability of the Latin American to speak English before he enters school is the primary reason Latin Americans attain only a 3.5 average grade level while the Negro attains 7.2 and the Anglo attains 11.5. Who is to blame? Ignorance. The lack of education is reducing the Latin American to a second-class citizen. Each fall, we have hundreds of thousands of Latin American children entering school. These children are natural-born American citizens like your children. They're not immigrants. The language barrier, the inability to speak and understand English, separates these Latin American children from their classmates. Speaking no English, these Latin American children are shut out of the activities in the schoolroom. Their desire to learn is squelched. Instead of becoming a working part of the whole group, they become sullen, turn inward, and form an island. At first, each unto himself, but later, without their Latin American children, into a small, isolated segment. Thus, at a time when the child needs to feel a part of the group, since he has recently been separated from his home to go to school, he feels alone and unwanted. And this feeling spreads to all of his activities. The other children cannot understand him, and he cannot understand them, so they don't want to play with him. He is confused and bewildered and doesn't understand why he should be so different from other children. He wants to go home to his own family, his own neighborhood, where he can understand what is being said, 
and people can understand what he says. In order for us to understand the problem fully, it is necessary that we examine the conditions which have allowed the situation to exist and continue. As with many minority groups, our Latin American citizens are usually clustered in one area. Most Latin American adults spend their home and working hours in association only with other Latin Americans. Thus, children grow up speaking the language of their ancestors, the language of a country in most cases they have never seen. Since they have little preschool contact with people speaking English, they have no opportunity to learn to speak and understand it. In his home life, the Latin American child learns the customs and habits of his parents who learned them from their parents, who learned them from theirs. Usually there is no conscious effort to immerse the child in the ways of his forebearers. He is not exposed to English, so he doesn't learn English. He hears his parents speak Spanish. He sees only the Spanish newspaper his parents read, and he hears only Spanish radio broadcasts. The child's parents have never understood the necessity of learning the English language so they have made no attempt to teach the preschool child English. And so often the first contact he has with English is going to school, where he immediately becomes an outsider in a room full of other children who understand and speak this strange new language as readily as he understands and speaks the language of his parents. The tragedy of this situation lies in the fact that almost all children want to learn and they ask that they be provided the basic tools for the task. No child chooses to be an outsider in his first encounter in school. His natural inclination is to be a part of the whole group. The Latin American child has been part of a group in his home, in his neighborhood, and when he goes to school, he expects to become a part of the still different group there. Another major cause of this language barrier problem is the migratory nature of the farm worker. Usually coming to this country with no skills learned in his native land, he is forced into migratory farm work to support his family. And while he and his family are traveling with the different crops or harvest seasons, his children have little or no schooling. The child doesn't get started in one school till it's necessary for the parent to move on to another area. When the child was behind at the start of school, his only prospect is to lag farther and farther behind until he seriously doubts the wisdom of attending at all. Usually, a Latin American child will attend school only until he is old enough to begin working. He quits school with a feeling that he has been cheated, forced to remain behind while other children his own age advance to higher grades. He is often filled with a mixture of anger, shame, and a desire to blame somebody only he doesn't know who to blame because he doesn't understand the conditions that made it impossible for him to keep abreast of the other children. But he finds that even quitting school and going to work isn't the answer, for his earning power is tied to the type of work he can perform. And with his meager education, he isn't equipped to do anything except menial labor. If this lack of education among our Latin American citizens is allowed to continue, they will become an economic liability instead of an asset. The Southwest has enjoyed the Latin Americans' contributions to its social and material life. The border states have adopted their products, food, architecture, and music. Suffice it to say that this educational problem must be met head on immediately in as many places as there are Spanish-speaking preschool children. We cannot afford to shrug off the life of an individual with the excuse that he is solely responsible for his personality or that it doesn't concern us. Since we are a part of society and he is another part of society, we must accept some responsibility for the conditions which mold his personality. What is being done now and what can we expect in the future? It has been proposed that something be done to overcome the language barrier, not just with children, but with all ages. Because of the strong musical background of the Latin American people, they listen to the radio much of the time. It is then one effective medium through which the English language could be introduced into the home. 
Such a method would be doubly advantageous since it would allow all members of the family to share in a common experience of hearing English spoken. It would likewise encourage the child to study the language with more zeal. He would not be an outsider in his family if they too spoke English. Another example of family participation is already in practice. The Junior Forum in Houston conducts regular classes for Latin Americans of all ages in which they are taught to speak and understand English. Classes like these are contagious in two ways. Latin Americans in other cities will hear of the progress being made and set up their own program along similar lines. And as the individuals in such classes advance, their example will encourage other reluctant persons to join such classes. Many business and fraternal clubs in cities where Latin Americans are centralized are today providing leadership and sponsoring similar classes for all ages. Studies have shown that the average child starting the first grade of school needs a 400 word vocabulary. Providing this vocabulary will assure that the child will not be left out of classroom or playground activities. Confusion, resentment, bewilderment will have no opportunity to gain a foothold in these children's minds. From their first day in school, they will feel like accepted members of the group and the transition from home life to school life will be a natural one as it should be. We know that the situation as it exists, we recognize the remedies which must be applied. All we require is the interest, the energy, and the courage to put these remedies into action. There's no risk in this venture. We're not gambling. Any action, no matter how small, is a step forward. The success of any program among preschool Latin Americans is limited only by the amount of time and energy we wish to invest. Our investment is in the greatest of all life struggles, the advancement of mankind. Could man give himself to only one cause in his lifetime, he could find none more noble. The work of Miss Verver and others must continue. In the results of the work lies hope for the maximum growth of this country. Oh.